training for a Tahoe 200 and I'm about five weeks out, a little bit less. Run number two of the weekend of back to back to back long runs. I just started and I'm out at DuPont State Forest here. This is where the Hunger Games movie was filmed. I think a bunch of it was filmed here, but I know that the scene where PETA is buried in the mud by the river that was filmed here. I'm gonna run by that spot momentarily. For my race coming up, the 200, I wanted to get a pair of shoes that was a half size bigger, just in case I need, needed some more wiggle room. So why not get something other than Ultra? Because I have all the Ultras I could use. So I got Topo. I'm trying them out here. They've only got a quarter mile on them. Brand new, brand spanking new. But here's the thing that I notice is the drop on them. There's a, I believe a four millimeter drop on these shoes and I can feel it. It's so obvious. It's like I'm wearing a high heel and it's only a four millimeter drop, which is still exorbitantly low, right? And I don't think that I would have been able to tell if not for running exclusively in ultras for seven years. Pretty interesting. Uh, I can tell it's not something that I want for my daily training, but it is a tool to use in case you have an Achilles problem or a plantar fascia problem or a, a calf problem, something like that. I would go to these just for that reason, but we'll see. I'm going to put 20 to 25 miles on them ish today. We'll see how I feel first run in a shoe with a drop in over seven years. This is kind of the peak of training. <clears throat> As if there were such a thing. All your training really matters, right? right? You know, the kind of workouts that you're doing three months before, two months before, one month before, they really matter. And I'm not a proponent of uh, catching up, like doing big workouts during this time if you haven't been doing big workouts. Not a time to catch up, but assuming that you're a month, a month and a half out from a big race and you're, you're doing some bigger workouts that don't leave you totally flat because you've adapted to it, then it's a good indicator of kind of like where you are. So that's kind of where I am. <clears throat> I'm at a place where I'm doing back to back to back long runs on the weekend. So I go Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Now, before training for a 200 miler, I'd never even done a back to back. So leading up to Tahoe 200 this year, if you rewind to maybe three months before, I started doing back to backs and I did four of them. And they weren't giant, but they were, they were giant for me because I'd never done a back-to-back. -back. And I started out about 20 miles, back it up with uh, 13 miles, something like that. And then I worked my way up to about 30 miles, back it up with about 15 miles or so, 16. That was the highest I got. And then I did my first triple, and I did that two weeks ago. Basically got 63 miles all on trail in three days. I think it came out to basically uh, 17 and then 21 and 24 or something like that. I don't know. So here I am again and another back to back to back. And I'll tell you, they're not as hard as you would think because you go slow, you know? <laughs> I've, I'm really enjoying them. So leading into this, what I thought I would do is just spend three days and go 120 miles. That was a goal of mine leading into this race. I wanted to go from Klingman's Dome, which is on the Appalachian Trail and the Mountain to Sea Trail, and take the Mountain to Sea Trail 120 miles all the way to my house. I really wanted to do that, but I concluded it wasn't a good idea because uh, I had been getting over a uh, tibialis posterior injury and I didn't want to be 
120 miles away from aid. So I decided to just run from home three days and sleep in my own bed, make it a little more conservative. And that's what I've been doing. So I've never done, I, I feel like the one thing that's kind of lacked in training is just being on my feet for 20 hours, running, hiking, anything, and doing that two days or three days in a row. But it's not the way the life worked out this time. So this is how I'm doing it. So right now I'm about three miles in to my second day. Yesterday I got 22 miles. And today and tomorrow I'm planning to get between 20 and 25. We'll see. I'm not gonna do anything stupid, you know? Like this, right? I'm on the trail. I'm walking right now across the creek. It's, <laughs> it's kind of easy. I find that going easy is just less injury provoking than even my daily average pace, you know? On the trail, I might run nine minute mile pace. On the road, I might be running 7.30 pace, something like that. I don't really run on the road. But on the trail, you know, 9.30 pace on similar terrain to this with some elevation gain, just as like an average run. But on these long runs, I'm running 10 or 11 or even 12 minute miles. And occasionally doing a power hike in 13 or 14 minute mile. And so it's really not that hard. It's just enjoyable. And I feel like the injuries that I had, tibialis posterior, it benefits. I'm like apprehensive going into these long weekends thinking, ooh, there's a little bit of tenderness there. Maybe we shouldn't do it. But then I go do it and it gets better. <laughs> this has happened three times during the training cycle where I question, should I run so long? Then I do and I come out of it less injured. And maybe the reason is just because of doing, see, here's, a, here's something that I share with my runners is if you have it, something that hurts or an injury, or if you're coming back from a setback, you wanna do, find an activity that is, that you can do pain-free. Maybe it's running slow, or maybe it's biking, or maybe it's swimming, or lifting weights, as long as it's pain-free, and then do that as much as you can. One hour a day, 10 hours a day, like as much as you can. And that is the prescription for getting over an injury. Find the pain-free motion and do it all day, every day. That's kind of what I'm doing here. So, we'll see how today goes. I'm feeling great. In about 10 miles, I'll be halfway through with this weekend, but Tahoe is now less than five weeks away. And I don't intend on doing any giant runs within the last three weeks. So I've got this, and then I've got maybe one more back to back, not a triple, probably just a double in two weeks at altitude once I arrive in Tahoe. And that'll be it. And then it's just kind of maintain, run daily, focus on feeling good, focus on being calm and ready, focus on eating fruit, sleeping well, smiling, feeling happy, enjoying life, even gratitude for the course for life, for training. That's what the last couple weeks will really be focused on. I do that anyway, but I'm gonna be running a little bit less. I'm not gonna taper, but I'm not gonna do a big workout. It'll just be a bunch of like normal runs, you know? And consequently, my mileage will be a little bit lower because <laughs> I won't be doing 60 to 80 miles in a weekend. It'll just be you know, 20 miles in a weekend. All right, I'll catch you guys on the next one. And lots of fruit, so much fruit, more fruit than, than ever, really. No. And once I get to into Tahoe, it's gonna be 20 to 30 pieces of fruit a day, only fruit. Fruit is where it's at. Hydrating, energizing, delicious, fun, and uh, it's living, you know, living food. I'm a living person. I want to give my body what it needs in order to perform. <laughs>